how is the White House reconciling Pompeo's confirmation that Russia is behind this massive hack and President Trump's tweet today that pointed blame toward China? Well, they really can't reconcile those two things, Alicia. And in fact, a U.S. official that I spoke with this afternoon told me that as of yesterday, officials at the White House were actually in the process of preparing a written statement that was going to formally attribute this cyber breach to Russia's government. Uh, but then, for some unknown reason, those officials were told uh, to put a halt on that, not to put out that statement. Uh, they weren't exactly sure what was going to happen next. Uh, and then they were caught off guard today when the president uh, tweeted out the these statements, raising the prospect that it was China responsible for this, even though we haven't heard uh, anything in the last week from either U.S. officials or for cyber experts who have been looking uh, at the imprint of how this was carried out uh, and trying to figure out who was behind it. Uh, and now oh, we are hearing from those officials that they have been uh, doing their best to try to figure out uh, what to say to the American public about this. And as we asked the White House this afternoon, basically, who was right? Is it Pompeo saying it was Russia? or President Trump saying it may have been uh, China. The response that we got from National Security spokesman John Ulyat was that the focus at the point, this point in time uh, is on investigating and on mitigating uh, that incident um, and also saying that there will be an appropriate response to those actors behind this conduct, uh, notably using the word actors in plural, suggesting that maybe they're trying to leave themselves some wiggle room by suggesting that there might have been uh, more than one actor uh, at play here, but you don't hear in that statement uh, any comments about either Russia or China. So at this point, we're in a really muddled situation, a lot of confusion about what the U.S. government knows about it at this point. Uh, and as we know, that is one of the hallmarks of the way that the Russians try to operate in this space. They want that confusion. They want that uh, doubt about what's actually happening. Malcolm, I would argue that muddled is a kind characterization. You have Chris Krebs, the former director of the Cybersecurity and Infrastructure Security Agency, who was fired by President Trump for defending the results of the election, pushing back against Trump's false voter fraud claims, tweeting, do not conflate voting system security and solar winds. The proof is in the paper. You can audit or recount again to confirm the outcome, like they did in Georgia and Michigan and Wisconsin and Arizona can't hack paper. Malcolm, how dangerous is it for Trump to attempt to conflate the facts of this security breach with his lies about voter fraud? Oh, it's very dangerous. And as a matter of fact, we're seeing out that danger play out this afternoon when President Trump, who apparently lives in a delusional world, uh, had sat down with uh, the lawyer uh, of Michael Flynn and General Michael Flynn uh, to entertain the possibility of him calling the armed forces out to commit martial law against the United States to seize the voting systems in four states and then carry out another uh, election in the four states that he lost. That's the level of delusion we're having to deal with today. So for President Trump to conflate the election with the solar winds hack, uh, it just goes to show you that he has no clue what he's talking about. He doesn't live in the reality that we're all living in. And where we are going right now is dangerous. A sitting president of the United States has brought these two, ir, you know, ir, 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 irrelevant things together and has conflated that with the possibility of him having to carry out martial law in the United States. It's insane. Malcolm, in what ways could Russia leverage the information they've gathered that would elevate this breach from espionage, which is how it keeps being referenced to an all out attack? Yeah, well, that's beautiful part, a uh, beautiful question that you've asked there, because right now they're using the phrase espionage because all we have detected so far is the actual hack of the solar winds uh, management system, how they have gone through other agencies, how they have created a network of backdoors, how they've gotten legitimate and illegitimate keys to allow them to go in and control systems. But what we haven't determined is whether they have laid landmines or booby traps or whether they actually actually tend to carry out a systemic attack on the United States and knock down all of these agencies simultaneously and, you know, essentially bring to a standstill the United States government. 
because we have detected this system. Granted, the first nine months that they were in, as we understand, uh, they had to have seen this as an opportunity. But Russia doesn't do things just because a door is open. They have been planning this attack for years. And that means that they, when they found that, that, you know, the coronavirus gave them that opportunity, they went in, they started infiltrating all of these network spaces around the United States in government and private business. But the question is, what was their ultimate intention? Was it to bring a level of chaos for Joe Biden on day one by crashing the system? We don't know. All I know is, is that Russia has carried out the second largest malicious attack against the United States, and the attack on our electoral system in 2016 was the first.